What's up guys, Mike here from Ecom Knives and we have another tutorial today. This one is going to be how to do that. Removable handle scales. This has been requested a lot, a lot, a lot and finally I'm getting to it. I have a bunch of fixed blades that need handles. So we're going to take this one here and slap some handles on it. Now, first things first, obviously you need a finished knife. As you can see, this is all finished ground, it's all done. The only thing I haven't done is the spine. Right? Now, this, this has been pre-drilled with quarter inch holes, so it's going to go here and here. These are all just lightning holes and the lanyard hole there. So, quarter inch holes, those, those are my mounting holes. So before heat treat, I just drilled a quarter inch hole. That was it, and no reaming, no nothing. You actually want them a little bit snug, so I don't even bother to ream them. Next up, you're gonna need your handle scales. Uh, now these, I wanted red liners, so I glued these up yesterday. So this is black G10 with red liners. Uh, this is about a quarter inch thick each. Uh, thickness really doesn't matter too much. But don't go super thin with the removable scales because it's going to make your life a little difficult. Uh, let's see. Next up, you're going to need these threaded standoffs. See these? Now, I get these from McMaster Car along with the screws, and I'll leave links in the description of exactly the ones I use. In case you don't want to do that, here's the package for if you want to pause that and get the part number. They are quarter inch, so quarter inch outer diameter, three eighths of an inch long, and they are uh, 832 threads. Okay, so you're going to need a couple of those. I think they're like maybe a dollar each or something like that. They're, they're fairly cheap. Next up, you're going to need the screws that go with them. So, the screws, and here's the box for the screws. If you could uh, pause that, there's the part number. Again, from McMaster Car. And these are 832 screws, Torx pan heads, or pan or button. Oh no, pan head. Yeah, Torx, uh, they're T20 Torx. Pan heads, um, and they're quarter inch long. So, 832 Torx pan head and quarter inch long. You can get longer ones and shorten them. Uh, I used to buy the 3 8 long ones and I just shorten them but sometimes I get away with not having to shorten these. Now if you have a project like, like this one here where you need black they also have the same screw in black same size and everything and here's the part number for that. If you want to go ahead and pause that. And again, this is all from McMaster. I forget how much this box is. It's not terribly expensive. It has 50 in a box. Okay, first things first is I'm going to have to move you and set you up because uh, one drawback to um, removable handles is your handle material and your knife blade have to, your knife handle, have to be perfectly flat because there is no glue, there is no bond to suck everything together nice and flat. You know, Sometimes you can cheat a little bit when you're doing a glue up handle and those clamps will kind of press it in and, and flex it just a, just a touch to take up some gap. If you have a gap and they're not even, you're going to see it on a removable handle scale. So just note that. So let me move you over, I'll set you up, we'll get these scales nice and flat. It shouldn't take too much with G10, G10 comes in pretty flat. But I have a little, uh, little bit of residual glue on here from the glue up, so we'll clean that up and then we'll get rolling. We're over here by the granite surface plate and this is a 400 grit uh, piece of sandpaper. And we're just going to, and now like I said, G10 is pretty uh, flat as it is. So I'm just going to clean up some of these scratches because I got most of the glue off on the grinder. So I got it soaked in uh, glass cleaner to help stick. And what I want to do is do some circles this way, circles that way, and kind of spread the weight of your hand out 
across the whole thing. Don't just do this on one side because you'll remove more on one side. So, and spread the weight of your hand out. You see I'm reaching out with my, my finger there. Like I said, this is 400 grit paper, so I'm not really removing a ton of material. Obviously, if, if your material is way off, you're going to have to really flatten it. But whatever it takes, make sure it's flat. And when it's flat, they should stick together like that. You see? So this is pretty flat. I'm just going to clean it up a little bit because the scales are removable. And if your customer or whatever goes to remove those scales to clean up the knife and it looks like you clean this up by chewing on it with your teeth, that's, uh, that's no good. Chances are they'll never see it, but just take, uh, take the extra step and, and do a good job, you know, make it look nice. Okay, now that our scales are flat and they're sticking together and we could test fit it, See if we see any light coming through. You know, hold it up to the light and look and see if you have anything. I'm not putting a ton of pressure because remember we're relying, relying on a couple of screws, not a bond all the way around to hold this together. So after everything's all flat, I like to square up my scales just so I got a reference. So if you see, if you have to clamp them together and just touch them to the grinder just so the front's nice and even. And the reason I like to do that is because I like to use the flat end of the scale as a reference. So when I go to mock it up, if you will, I have my scales come out that far. You see? Just past where the grind starts. And I'll grind it back. But this way I know I have plenty of room and I can get the handles nice and forward. So now, I'm going to take this whole mess and I'm going to clamp it together. This is what I got. See, I got some can't twist clamps, and it doesn't matter if they can't twist or not. You could use the regular old C clamps are fine. But you want to clamp it in so obviously your knife isn't hanging over the edges or anything like that. And we're going to drill these two holes. So this one here and this one here. So I need just enough clearance for my drill to get down in there. Now that it's clamped up, you could do this now or you could do it later after you've drilled the holes, but I like to go around it with a marker. You see, just like this. Don't worry if you get a marker all over the blade. It'll come right out with alcohol. See what I mean? This way after the holes are drilled, I'll have a reference point of what to grind to. Save me a little time. Here's what the setup looks like uh, when I'm getting ready to drill the holes. As you can see I had to move the clamps around to get the one, two, three blocks underneath. Now that'll give me the clearance for the clamps. You see what I mean? Right down here. Now the downside to this is you have to worry about the dreaded helicopter and the blade is finished ground, it's not sharp, but if that spins around and whacks you, you're going to know about it. So be very, very careful with this step. Uh, if you have a better method of fixturing it and putting this whole mess in a vise, that is the better way to do it. So, this is the way I do it for now. And I'm not too worried about scratches uh, for these things, because the nice thing about uh, removable handle scales is I can go back and refinish everything. So, it's no big deal. Now, if you're worried about scratches, you could put a little tape down or something. It's, that's really it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drill the two holes for the screws, and I'm going to drill the third hole for the lanyard. And when you do it this way, you got to hold it down nice and tight. Now you probably can't see it with my hand in a way like that, but I'm kind of peck drilling. I'm just kind of. There we go, and we're through. See, we got our first hole done. Now, if you have to reposition the clamps, your best bet is to take either a quarter inch drill bit or 
take one of those standoffs and put it down in that hole. It'll save your spot and uh, you don't have to worry about misalignment later on. So I'm going to do just that. Hold on tight. So you got one of those little standoffs and I got this itty bitty little watchmaker's brass hammer when it's got a plastic end. And it's snug so I'm going to have to tap it in place. But you want it snug. That's what's going to keep it from spinning when you go to screw the handles together. Just tap it in place and now our spot is saved. So I can take this clamp off and I can move them around to wherever I need them to drill the next hole. So for right now we'll just use the one clamp. Spin this so you guys can see it. Whoop. Now I like to set up my one, two, three blocks like that. So I'll set that up so I can drill through the one, two, three block and then I'll position the blade on top of it. Just don't move that first block. Okay, you see? That's how I know I'm lined up. And then I'll hold it down as tight as I can to prevent the dreaded helicopter and off we go. I'll go down a little bit and release. Down a little more, release. This will help get all the crap out of the hole. When you're getting close to the end, when you're going to punch through, ease up on the pressure and it'll help uh, mitigate the helicopter. So there's a second one. So now I can get the second pin, tap that in place. You don't have to bang them all the way in. Don't use a, a sledgehammer or something. Nice tiny little soft hammer. So I mean, thing weighs probably three ounces. So we're locked in. We got our two standoffs in place. Now I just have to drill the lanyard hole, and we're good to go. So you see, we're all lined up in our drawing. Now the reason I wanted to square up that other scale, why I think that's important. So when I butt them up together, I know the knife is going to fit on both of them. So orientation does matter. So. We're going to go inside to inside like we're going to set it up on the knife. So obviously I'll take these pins out, we'll set it up inside to inside, clamp it together, we'll line up the ends, make it like nice and even, and then we'll just use the one we just drilled as a template. So let me do that and then we'll drill the last holes. We're all lined up, the liners are inside, the black is on the outside, and it's all clamped together. So now here's our template. Right. You just want to make sure that you hold it nice and tight because if it helicopters, these holes are going to get ruined because it's G10. It's going to get ruined really quick. So be careful drilling. Use a sharp drill bit and uh, take your time. Setup is more important than drilling the hole. If you set it up wrong, and, and if, you know what? If you're doing it and you're questioning yourself, stop what you're doing and reset up. I've made so many mistakes doing stuff like that. So take a, take a lesson from me. I learned the hard way. All right, guys. Looks like everything's lined up. As you can see, I just took those standoffs and I kind of punched it all together. Make sure everything lines up nice and nice before I continue. Uh, if it doesn't line up, I mean, it'll take a few taps with a small hammer like this. Uh, but if you got to start really wailing on it, you might have yeah, you might have got a little wonky with your hole or something like that. So take the time and. Uh, and make sure you didn't wander off with your hole. But a few taps with a hammer and it should go right in. Right. Well, maybe more than a few taps. A quarter inch drill bit really isn't a quarter inch, technically. They're a little small. So anyway, we're all lined up. So now what I can do is cut off all the excess. Now the reason I drew that pattern on the inside is so now I can take the scales, flip them over so the insides are out and pin them together and use that as a reference to kind of grind away. So it'll get me in the ballpark at least and I don't have to have the knife in there because if you get a little too squirrely and you start grinding away at your knife with a 60 grip belt you might change the shape of it and you don't want that. So. Always the perfect little triangle piece gets stuck behind the saw blade. <laughs> it's like I it's like I try to cut out the perfect size piece to fall back there and jam up the saw. I got it roughed out, 
So now I'm going to take it over to the grinder. This just, you could do it all on the grinder. This just minimizes some of the fine dust floating around in here. Dust. I just went and fitted the scales, and you can see, even going up to the line leaves me a little bit of clearance. You don't want to go past the line. So now, with the knife the way it's going to end up, I'm going to take it all the way down to the spine. Now for this, I'm pretty close, uh, but I still got some material to remove, so I'm going to stick with the 60 grit. And right now, you see like my, uh, my little triangle thing got a little screwy. So I'll put another marker line and it'll tell me where to bring that angle. So I'll mark it right there in the center of the grind and I'll be able to move that around and maybe make it a little less pointy and kind of fit my preferences. So I'm going to go ahead and keep on cleaning this up and it's just held together. There's nothing in there except for those threaded sandoffs. That's it. No screws, no nothing. So we'll get it all shaped up and then uh, we'll recess these holes. As you can see, it's not perfect, but I've got the roughing done. So we're still going to, it's a very, very rough finish. It's not even all the way through in some spots, but I don't want to do that with a 60 grit belt anyway. It's just going to tear up a whole bunch of steel, and I don't want to change the shape of this too much. So now I'm going to switch over to some fine belts, and I'll go through and clean up all of this so it's perfectly flat and even. Uh, you've got, you guys have seen me do this a number of times in, in other videos, so I'm just going to go ahead and do it off camera. You know, just uh, if, if you want some techniques on how to do it, you can check out the um, How to Make a Knife series. Uh, you know, uh, contouring handles or fitting your handles or whatever it was. And uh, I did, how I did it in that video is exactly how I'm going to do it now, so no use in making you sit through that too. Okay. So I'll come back when we go to recess these holes. Wow, my camera's covered in G10. <laughs> so anyway, I just about finished uh, profiling this and matching it up to the spine. As you can see, I tilt my grinder on my on its side nowadays to do that. Uh, you could do it by hand if you had to. It doesn't matter if you have a tilty grinder and all that stuff. But whatever you got to do, get it to that. And you guys have seen me do it, like I said before. Uh, now, this, I just wanted to stop and, and show you this. If you look, now remind you, there's no screws in the knife, it's just held together with, uh, with those standoffs. You see there's no gaps? That's what you want. You want that nice, clean finish, no gaps, and there's no screws in it yet. Obviously, I didn't do the finger choil, but this is what you want. If you get to this stage and you see gaps, take it back to the surface plate or however you flatten things and get them flat, get those gaps out. Because you don't want to have to rely on those screws to close them for you. So, alright, uh, we're going to call this good enough for now. I'll go back and do this later. Uh, but I'm anxious to show you uh, the next step. So, we're going to jump back on the drill press and we have our masonry bit. You guys heard me talk about this before. and. Ugh, covered in this stuff. I've had a lot of you guys ask me what size for these screws. So I'm going to give you a simple method on how to figure that out. Hold on. The shorter answer is for these size screws, this is a Bosch. Remember, I showed you that Bosch set. Uh, 5 16 So if we measure it with our indicator, we come up with about a 3. 319, 320, right about there, you see it? We'll call that, yeah, we'll call that 320 for even number's sake. Our screw, no mind knife maker hands, our screw, we measure the head of that, and we're about, what is that, 315? Yeah, 315. So, you want this as close to 315 as you can without being 315 because if it's 315 on the nose 
it's going to be a tight, tight fit. So 316, 317, 320, 330 even. Uh, you just don't want to get up until like 350 or, or whatever. You know, just, just don't go crazy because it's just going to have a big ring around it. You want it to look like it was press fit. And this is the cheap option. Obviously the better option and the, the right way to do it is to buy a counter bore with a pilot. Uh, of course I don't have any laying around. Uh, but a piloted counter bore is going to cost you like 50 bucks, 60 bucks if you can find one that's going to fit this perfectly. So, Bosch drill bit said it is. <laughs> All right, so I might have lied. I went back and put the cleaned up that finger toil. But that's uh, 400 grit, guys. Uh, I'll probably take it up to the bevels are, I believe, about a 600. So I'll probably take it up to that a little later. I still didn't do this though. All right, drill press, right, going. All right, so we're at the drill press, and I got my 5/16 masonry bit. All mounted up in there. Got my one, two, three block for a base. Now, it doesn't really matter what you use as a base as long as it's flat. And don't make the mistake I made. <laughs> We're going over a few of these today. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram, you saw that I made a bunch of scales and then I tried to contour the holes, uh, try to do the holes after I contoured it. That's a no no. Don't do that. Uh, I made the mistake that scales are ruined and I had to do it over again. With these ones, we're going to lay it nice and flat. Now if you have to mark them to say out in big letters, make sure you do that because if you do it backwards you're in trouble. So obviously we could tell red side in for us. Now you want to set up your stop on your drill press. So if you have a stop, and most of them do, they have this stupid little wheel thing on the side. It's okay, that stop. If not, you could always lower your table so at the full range of travel of your your quill it's going to stop before it goes all the way through that's the idea here so I have it set up and I'll zoom you in so you can see it give you a little tilty action here okay now you guys are on a little bit of an angle compared to the drill press. But I have, see this flat part right here of the drill? It's about halfway down that shoulder. I might have to go down just a bit further. You see what I mean? In comparison. Don't worry about the tip because the, the tip is just going to guide it. It's not actually going to do anything except for, you know, it'll round out the surface a little bit inside. So don't worry about that. Well, we are worried about these shoulders. Now, I like to start it a little shallow and leave the depth stop on the drill press where it is. Now, if you have some liner material laying around like this, these just so happen to be a perfect 20 thousandths of an inch thick. You get two of them, that's 40 thousandths of an inch and so on and so forth. So, I like to start shallow and then I'll shim it with whatever, you know, you could use whatever you have as long as it's consistent shim it and that'll give me the desired depth so I'll get this started and we're not gonna lock this down or anything like that let's see if I can do it from back here so you can see it see how it's wobbling you see that that's okay you can let it wobble it'll center itself and then you're going to hold it tight and plunge down to your depth stop Now, as you can see, we didn't get very far with that one. Yeah, that is certainly not far enough at all. We want this to be completely flush, so, all right, goodbye, screw. We're going to shim it up. We'll use two right away and see how that looks. see the hole is nice and recessed let me get the other screw 
we got our screw we'll drop it in and we're pretty good we see you got the tiny little bit of the tip sticking out but it's a nice fit uh, nice fit it just drops right in there's no snagging or anything and that little bit of uh, roughness around the hole will come out with a little bit of hand sanding so I'm not too concerned about that I think what I'm going to do is just shim it one more time so I have one more liner over here that's covered in crap so I'll shim it, shim it one more time and that should be enough to get us nice and uh, nice and recessed so we got three shims going Let's go ahead and fire her up alright so that took another twenty thousandths out and we'll test it one more time there we go that's looking a little better see that screw disappears when you look at it at that angle and it's nice and recessed in there and there's still plenty plenty of meat inside the handle to hold on to you don't want to make this paper thin inside or any little bit of force and you're gonna pop that handle right off you don't want that so now that I have my depth figured out I'm gonna go ahead and do the other three and now the depth will be the same on all four of them this goes pretty quick. It's going to take me a little longer because I'm actually behind the drill press right now. It's a little odd. Let it wobble. Plunge all the way down. Done. See? Okay, that's all there is to it as far as recessing those holes. You see, we got four of them done. We'll test fit. Just pick a random one. Let's try that back one there. Look at that. Can't see it from the top. Let's try the front, see if we got it even. Same thing, that screw disappears. Perfect. Okay. Now, assuming you have um, already fitted this up to your knife uh, and you did all the uh, the spine work and everything, you know, like I showed you at the 400 grit and everything's nicey nice, I still got to do the front on mine, but assuming you did all that. Uh, now it's just a matter of you can mount it up to your knife and uh, contour your scales that way so just using those spacers again those threaded standoffs it's this pretty snug fit and you could do all your contour work and all your shaping and everything while it's attached to the knife if you like that better or what some guys do and what I, I've done a, a few times is forget about the knife just go and contour it this way why not? Right? Now you don't have to worry about scratching up a blade. So you just slap it together, do your contouring, however you want to do it, your little rock pattern or whatever. And, uh, and that's that. Uh, so we're not done uh, quite yet. Obviously we have to contour it and everything. Uh, but I also have to cut and measure the, uh, the standoffs and the screws and stuff. So depending on how deep you went and how thick your scales are you might have to trim back your screws a little bit uh, but that's really no big deal I don't want to drag the video on too long so maybe we'll call the we'll call that the end of this video and maybe we'll do a part two um, just so you're not sitting in front of the TV or computer or your phone or whatever for two hours listening to me ramble I'm awfully rambly today <laughs> All right, guys, I'll see you on part two or whenever. All right, this is Mike from Ecom Knives. I'll catch you on the next video.